Good morning. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for your continued support these, this past month. Our, our activities are really moving forward at a tremendous speed. Today, as we celebrate Rishun, I'm filled with joy to see what God has already prepared for us this year. I can only imagine how exciting this year is going to be. Just started and there's so much going on already. But today is also a very special day. Not only are we celebrating Rishun, but we're celebrating the four year anniversary of our church, the resurrection of our church. And though it is resurrected, I think for many of us, it can still be a very vague understanding of what the mission of our church is. What is the true purpose, right? For a long time, I had celebrated the service thinking of Rishun as the beginning of spring, a new beginning, and all that, right? A new calendar year. And it wasn't until when the church was resurrected that I started to realize that there's a deeper meaning between this, church, this service and our church. As was written in the invitation letter that we sent out to everybody for the service. For a long time, the service was very important for me, but it was very vague at best. Today, it's thanks to Kirsh Sama and Masak Sama that I'm starting to understand what that really means and what it means for World Church of Messiah, Meishu Sama's church. We know that World Church of Messiah was founded 74 years ago, but for the first time, Meishu Sama's church, World Church of Messiah, after its resurrection, is really fulfilling its purpose. Not only that, if Kirsh Sama did not exist, we still wouldn't know that. Right? We would still think that we were following Meishu Sama's church, and be wandering in darkness. So I can't emphasize enough how blessed we really are to be under the leadership of Kyoshu Sama and Masak Sama. Regarding the founding of the church, there were a few points that really caught my attention in the inaugural statement that we sent out in that letter. That I'd like to share with you a little bit for those who haven't read the letter. We can say in one of those points is Meishu Sama's joy, right, for the founding of this church. How excited Meishu Sama was. At the end of the inaugural statement, Meishu Sama says, the time for celebration has finally arrived, right, as we heard in today's hymns as well, right? The time for celebration has finally arrived. And when we hear that, it's easy to think and see Oh, Meishu Sama is just really happy because he fulfilled something, right? He was able to accomplish this, his will. But if you go back a few sentences in that inaugural statement earlier, Meishu Sama says, this has a very serious significance. And needless to say, it is the materialization of God's profound will and not that of human intent. So Meishu Sama was not happy because it was something that he accomplished. He was expressing that excitement because of God's will being fulfilled. This also showed a second point for me that only now studying Kyoshu Sama and Masak Sama's sacred words is becoming more evident is the fact that everything that Meishu Sama did, his whole being, his whole body, his whole soul, his whole life was in service to God. And we say, oh, that, of course, Meishu Sama opened the church, right? He's our 
founder. And I think it's easy to take that very lightly. What does it mean to surrender your everything to God? What does it mean for Meshach Salman to surrender his everything to God? Just prior to the founding of the church, as many of you are now probably aware of the history of the church, Meishu Sama had two organizations. He had the Japan Kanon Church, right? And he had the Miroku Church. And at that time, when he founded the organization, Meishu Sama said, the two organizations are going to leave what they have built up until today and under a new direction and objective will unite as one. It was no longer the direction and objective that Meishu Sama had previously set on. Think about that, right? Meishu Sama has all these followers and he has these two organizations. Then God brings a whole new plan for Meishu Sama. And in just two years, Meishu Sama dissolves everything and says, we're opening something new. This spirit of Meishu Sama, right, to serve God with his whole heart, his whole being, Kyoshu Sama expressed in the New Year message that we received, right? Kyoshu Sama says, Meishu Sama poured his heart and blood into the construction of the sacred grounds here on earth as projections of heaven and offered everything he did in the process to God as God's work. Meishu Sama who would pour his heart and soul, his blood, to fulfilling God's will, took those two organizations and said, okay, we're going to do something completely new. And this is not it. It doesn't end there, right? This spirit of Meishu Sama, which is huge, right? This spirit, this progressive Meishu Sama, we see in everything he did. For example, in Jore, right? Now we are aware thanks to Kirsama and Masak Sama, what Meishu Sama really wanted to fulfill with Jore. And as we heard quoted many times over, and we can see Masak Sama's Rishun service message in 2022, Meishu Sama said, from now on, we enter the world of Sonin. Jore is not so important anymore. Sonin comes first, so pray in your hearts. Though Meishu Sama's main activity was Jore, he changed all that, right? He said, we're going to do something completely new. So what do we see about Meishu Sama? We see that he's never stagnant. He's never still, right? It's very common for us, if something is working, if something is going in the direction that we want or we think we want, we can say, Let's keep the status quo. Just keep it going, right? Don't touch it. If it ain't broken, don't fix it, is what they say in the U.S., right? But that wasn't Meishu Sama. That isn't Meishu Sama. Because it's not about Meishu Sama. It's about God the whole time. That takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of courage. That boldness in Meishu Sama. And the great thing about it is that Meishu Sama is very alive today. We think, oh, Meishu Sama died, right? No longer here. That's not true. He's very, very present. And that boldness and that progressive spirit to bring things forth new is coming ever so stronger. And I think we can see that very clear in Masek Sama's video message number 21. Right? And today, I'd like to share 
this video message with you. Some of you might have not seen it, some of you have, but look at this unyielding, indomitable spirit of Meishu Sama that is reflected through Masek Sama in this message. So I'd like to receive it and watch it with you at this moment and then share a few thoughts of that. Africa, Africa. When I think about the enormity of the mission Meishu Sama entrusted to you, my heart trembles with hope and excitement. All of us know that Meishu Sama in Japan constructed the three sacred grounds of Hakone, Atami, and Kyoto. Hakone of fire, Atami of water, and Kyoto of soil. This was when Meishu Sama was advancing his divine work mainly in Japan during his lifetime here on earth. But now, as all of you know very well, Meishu Sama advances his work throughout the world, and he now has a new thought about sacred grounds and the role they should play. Needless to say, as I have said it before, all the sacred grounds that have existed until today have been tainted and desecrated by the despicable and cowardly acts of spying and blackmail committed against Kyoshu Sama by Sekai Kyusekyo. These places are no longer sacred. They are just pieces of land without any connection to Meishu Sama. Taking this issue into consideration, and also seeing that his members now exist in every corner of the world, Meishu Sama now has a new vision of sacred grounds. The sacred grounds of fire, water, and soil are no longer attributed to Hakone, Atami, and Kyoto, but to something much greater, something that, encom something that encompasses the whole world. That is, the sacred ground of fire is now attributed to Japan, more specifically to the holy sanctuary of the Messiah that World Church of Messiah will construct. Meishu Sam has already determined the place for the sacred ground of water, but the time is not yet ripe for me to specify the place today. And third, the sacred ground of soil is now attributed to Africa, more specifically to the sacred ground that the African members will construct in the holy land of Angola. Before, it was Hakone, Atami, and Kyoto. Today, in this global age, it is Japan, a place I am not allowed to say yet, and Africa. Japan, the sacred ground of fire, and Africa, the sacred ground of soil. Africa is our motherland, right? It is the cradle of humanity. What place is better than Africa to be the sacred ground representing soil? It is just so fitting that Africa be the sacred ground of soil. And what is the role that the sacred ground of soil, the African sacred ground, should play? What is soil, then? Meishu Sama wrote the following. What you should know is the true significance of soil. When God the Creator prepared human beings a long time ago, He also created something that would produce enough food to sustain all human beings on earth. This something is soil. Meishu Sama is saying that the role of soil is to produce food to sustain human beings on earth. Naturally then, the role that the sacred ground of soil, that is the African sacred grounds, is to play should correspond to this will of Meishu Sama, this will of God. As I told you in my previous message, Meishu Sama taught us that when the ideal world comes, 
that is, when a paradise on earth is established, all of humanity will practice a vegan diet. He said that all of humanity will follow a vegan diet in the world of Miroku. By the way, in my last message, I used the phrase strict vegetarian diet. But actually, vegetarian or vegetarian diet is an ambiguous term. So I wish to avoid using it from now on. When using the Japanese term saishoku, Meishu Sama is essentially referring to a vegan diet. So the term vegan diet is more appropriate when describing the diet of the world of Miroku. What I'm trying to say is that Africa, the sacred ground of soil, should be the place to put forth great effort into the practice of Meishu Sama's nature farming. In this way, Africa could not only correspond to the will of Meishu Sama when he says that all people in the world will one day follow a vegan diet, but it could also produce a great amount of food to feed humanity. Yes. That's right. People of the world might have, might have the image, might have the image that Africa is poor, that African people suffer from hunger, and that Africa needs help. But Africa should and must prove them wrong. I mean, more than proving them wrong, Africa must practice nature farming on the greatest scale possible. On the greatest scale possible, and rather than being fed, rather than being fed, it should play the role of feeding the African people. No, feeding all of humanity to fulfill its role as the sacred ground of soil. The African sacred grounds of World Church of Messiah must turn into a place that epitomizes this role that has been assigned by God and Meshu Sama to all of you the African people. I know there will be a lot of difficulties ahead. I know there will be times when you think that it is impossible to practice nature farming in Africa where there are many dry lands. But I am certain that God and Meshu Sama will provide you with divine wisdom and assistance to overcome these difficulties and hardships. The time has come for all of you the African members, to fulfill the role Meishu Sama assigned to you. Go and start practicing nature farming to produce grains like corn. Grow vegetables, root vegetables, legumes, every kind of produce that can be harvested, har that can be harvested in your land. Let World Church of Messiah in Africa lead other churches around the world in the practice of nature farming and a vegan diet. Let World Church of Messiah in Africa lead the world in the efforts of constructing a world of Miroku, a paradise on earth. I say go, I say go on and start projects that even encourage people outside of our church to practice nature farming and a vegan diet. The world thinks that Africa is always influenced by outside forces. Let us prove it wrong. Just to be clear, I am not saying that we have, we have to deny medical science like we did before, nor am I giving any medical advice here. If you have concerns about your health, you should always consult a doctor and listen to the advice. What I'm talking about now is something much greater. It is about faith, about the mission Africa carries, and about the future of humanity. Africa, the sacred ground of soil. I believe the expectation Meishu Sama has of you, the people in Africa, is immense. By following the diet of the world of Miroku and by practicing nature farming, that is, by practicing a farming method proposed by Meishu Sama that prohibits the use of any type of chemical, pesticide or fertilizer, including animal manure, and only allows the use of simple and natural forms of compost, members in Africa will become 
will become the models for all other members in the world to follow. When I talk about food, I talk about it not only for us to correspond to the sacred, to the sacred word of Meishu Sama regarding the diet in the world of Miroku, but also, but also to correspond to the will of Meishu Sama who taught us the importance of nature farming. I strongly wish to correspond to these wills of these wills of Meishu Sama together with the African members and together with members all around the world. To those who are not in Africa, to those who are in Brazil, Portugal, the United States, Japan, Korea, Bolivia, Australia, the United Kingdom, and so forth, I encourage all of you to follow the example of Africa so that we can be worthy of being regarded as being regarded as residents of the world of Miroku. To all of you who are in Africa, let us practice nature farming like never before. Let us produce food through nature farming. Let us correspond to the will of Meishu Sama. And with our own hands, with our own hands, let us create a bright and glorious future for all of humanity. I believe it is in this way that you, the African members, will be able to fulfill the mission Meishu Sama has entrusted to you, you who live on the sacred ground of soil, that is, in Africa. How about that? Very powerful, right? First time seeing the message? Yeah? a gift. We receive the true gift. Through Masak Sama's sacred word, we can feel the passion, the fervor, and the certainty that this world of Miroku will come about. It's not a illusion, right? Or just a dream or something so far away. We can feel the true indomitable spirit that Meishu Sama has resonating through Masak Sama. One thing that really caught my attention in this video is when Masak Sama says, as I told you in my previous message, Meishu Sama taught us that when the ideal world comes, that is, when a paradise on earth is established, all of humanity will practice a vegan diet. He said that all of humanity will follow a vegan diet in the world of Miroku. Meishu Sama didn't say some people. He didn't say maybe, right? He said all of humanity. Masak Sama also said something in the video. We should follow the example and become worthy to be recognized as residents of this paradise on earth. That world is here, but we have to take the first steps. We're the ones following Meishu Sama, right? We have to be the first to follow that will of Meishu Sama. Who here was ever aware that Meishu Sama's sacred word on nature farming was so connected to a vegan diet? I wasn't, right? For me, it was Meishu Sama's talking about nature farming. I completely did not understand that. And I was like, oh, if I'm eating food without pesticides, without herbicides, without fertilizer, I'm following Meishu Sama's nature farming. That's not what Meishu Sama was showing, is it? There's much more to it. And on top of that, Meishu Sama shared that because of the vegan diet in the world of Miroku. 
Furthermore, as we see here, we're not here just to promote a healthy diet. There's many people in the world promoting a healthy diet. That's not what this is about. It's beyond that. As Masak Sama shares, when I talk about food, I talk about it not only for us to correspond to the sacred word of Meishu Sama regarding the diet in the world of Miroku, but also to correspond to the will of Meishu Sama who taught us the importance of nature farming. And beyond that, this is not just about building a sacred ground, a location. Right? If you really think about it, it's a very big statement. The sacred ground of soil, Africa. To be built in the Holy Land of Angola, he says, right? The whole continent of Africa. The sacred ground of soil. That's immense. But he says, what I am talking about now is something much greater. It is about faith. About the mission Africa carries and the future of humanity. This sacred word really, really moved me, right? Because it's going down to the very core of our faith. It's easy to hear it and simply say, well, African members are going to do it, right? I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to do it. It's not what this is about. We are part of this church. We are one with those members. Our faith is the essence of what this is all about. So it's not just a dream. It's not just some pie in the sky, as they say. This world started to materialize when the church was founded. In 1950. And now we are actively, as Masak Sama shared, right, with our own hands being part of that construction. So, even more to the importance of these words that Masak Sama says, what I'm talking about is faith, about the mission of Africa and the future of humanity. Meishu Sama is entrusting the future of humanity to each one of us, members of his church. So the question comes down to, do we really believe in Meishu Sama? Do we truly believe that he's very alive and moving in a bold new direction? Do we truly believe that he's working freely through the holy seed of Kyoshu? In today's sacred word, though it was very short, it was very powerful, I think. Meishu Sama explains that in the world of Miroku, there is no such thing as Kenshinjitsu, where everyone will be able to know the truth, right? That was from his sacred word today. And then right after it, in the book of Revelations, we have chapter 21, verse 1 through 7 in the book of Re Revelations. We hear the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. This is not just some beautiful parable on the Bible. God himself will dwell with them and be their God. Later in the passage we see, he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of water of life. 
Those who are victorious will inherit all this. I will be their God and they will be my children. Notice that it says those who are victorious. God is dwelling. However, those who are victorious will inherit all this. Meishu Sama, Meishu Sama who did all he did to fulfill God's will. Meishu Sama who is bold and not afraid to cast out everything he did to follow God's will. This Meishu Sama inherited all this. He became God's child. He was born anew as the Messiah. When we talk about Meishu Sama, we're talking about the very prototype God left for all of us to follow. That is the God, Omega, Alpha and Omega. The creator, everything that came into Meishu Sama and was born in you as the Messiah. That's what was revealed to all of us, the truth. We are in that world. It is that very power, that very being that is working and revealing to us all of humanity will follow a vegan diet. This is not of Meishu Sama's will, of Meishu Sama's intent. It is this God that is moving one with Meishu Sama. It is this God that is one with Kyoshu Sama. One with Masak Sama. Do we believe that or not? That's the final question for us, right? Because it all comes down to that. With that true faith, with that heart, accepting this true desire of God in Meishu Sama, I want to move forward in one heart with Kyoshu Sama with each of you, right? It's very interesting. There are people uh, within our church already, right? Who received this video and are already thinking, how can we implement that? What kind of projects can we do to bring this out to society? And that's wonderful initiative, right? I also think it starts very closer to home in our dinner table, right? How are we applying this in our daily life? Are we making that bold step, that change, discarding everything that we say, oh, this is nice, I like this, I've been used to this, and try the bold, the new, as Misha Sama did, right? And move in that direction. And then become that very example for the world, right? And from there, do all these projects and move forward in that direction. So we are truly blessed to be under the leadership of Kyoshu Sama, Mayumi Oksama, Masaki Sama, Mami Oksama, right? to follow this true will of Meishu Sama. So please take the printouts in front of the church. They're available in your church in all languages, right? Well, all languages, Portuguese and English at the moment, right? Take the video, share it, study it, and let's truly follow this will of Meishu Sama to live in this world of Miroku. Let's build it with our own hands. Thank you so much. May all honor, may all glory be returned to God always.